So this replay is the last match right before reaching Master Rank. I activate Piri Reese map to search for Paces, then use Paces to special summon Artuna. Hope the opponent doesn't have an Ash. Then special summon Lifeless Leafish, use Leafish to send Shift to the graveyard, and then banish the Shift, set the Imperm, and pass the turn. So one advantage that Goatee has against Snake Eyes is that Snake Eyes doesn't really have a good way to stop us from reaching deep beyond. Then we're going to chain the Maxi to their Maxi. If they use Call by the Grave, then it will stop their own Maxi. So it resolves, now both of us are going to be taking the Maxi challenge. Shift is now going to special summon itself, and we'll get our Paces. The opponent's going to normal summon Snake Eye Ash, and we're going to flip over Infinite Imperm. This is the best card to Imperm. If you don't have Imperm, you can also use Snopios' effect to target it and banish it when it leaves the field. This prevents it from activating its second effect, which must send itself to the graveyard as a cost. The second effect is the one you really want to stop, so if you do have Ash Blossom, that's the one you want to use it on. The opponent has an out to the Imperm on Snake Eye Ash. They use the spell to search for Snake Eye's Poplar and then use Poplar to search for their field spell. We did happen to draw into a Nib. Nib is another really good hand trap against Snake Eyes. You typically don't want to shotgun Nibiru on the fifth summon. Sometimes there are just better places in which you can activate it. The opponent's gonna send Poplar from the field into the graveyard to special summon Dial Bell Star, and then use Dial Bell Star to search for the original Sinful Spoil spell. They're going to special summon a monster from the deck, but we're not going to activate our Ash because we are going to be nibbing the board anyway. And here is one really good place to activate our cards. We're going to have to get rid of that Jet Synchron before they can Synchro into Savage Dragon and put up a Negate on the board. We use Arian Post to add Snopios to the hand, then we'll activate Shift to Synchro into our White Aura Whale, destroying both attack position monsters. They'll be able to summon their Snake Eye Flamberg from the Continuous Spell Zone into the Monster Zone. We'll activate Arian Post in the Graveyard. They're going to use Call by the Grave to negate it. In the past, it was very difficult for people to know where to use Call by the Grave against this deck, but now people are waking up. They now know to Call by the Grave Arian Post. So that's going to prevent us from searching our Zep, and so we're not going to be able to do Deep Beyond. And now they have Droll and Locked us, so we're not going to be able to get any more draws. And this is the perfect time to use Nibiru, because now they've already activated Flameberg, so if we tribute the field, they won't be able to bring back their monsters. This usually shuts them down for the rest of the turn. The opponent's going to Nib our Nib. That's the first time that's ever happened to me and then crash their nib into our nib. So we know the opponent cannot extend anymore, so we're going to banish our two fish, special summon our Snopios. The opponent takes 2000 damage at the end phase because they did not normal summon the card they searched for using the War Arc Thou spell. The opponent's going to shotgun a Max C on our standby phase, and we're going to chain our Ash Blossom. And they have another call by the grave, but we still have three more hand traps, so we don't really have to commit too hard to this turn to give them more draws. We just have to banish our tuners and pass our turn. So their maxi is going to resolve. Now we can special summon our Shif, Fairy of the Goatee, and bring back our Paces. Using Paces and Snopios, we will Synchro Summon into Askan. And then activate Snopios to banish our Paces. Use Shift and Askan to Synchro into our Baron the Floor. Destroy the Nib token, or we could have, but the Activate Effect Veiler. Now we don't want to commit too hard here because they might draw into a Nibiru. We'll normal summon the Shift, that way we have a fish on the field so we can banish the Shift in the graveyard, set the Imperm and pass our turn. On the opponent's standby phase, we'll get our shift and our paces back. At any point during this turn, we'll activate our Snopios to special summon our Deep Beyond, and we'll have an Omni Negate to protect us. So the opponent's going to banish their spell from the graveyard to draw a card. 
and then they're going to banish another spell to draw another card. They're going to normal summon the Snake Eye Ash. We're going to Imperm Snake Eye Ash. They're going to tribute that Snake Eye Ash for Link Karibo. So this was a misplay on my part. It would have been better to save the Imperm for another monster that's not level 1 if you know the opponent has a Link Karibo in the graveyard. So now they're going to search for Poplar and special summon it. And then use Poplar to search for the original Sinful Spoil spell. We're just waiting for the right moment to summon our Deep Beyond to get maximum value out of banishing the entire field. The opponent's going to special summon their Jet Synchron from the graveyard, and right now is a really good time to summon Deep Beyond. We'll activate the Paces. Paces and Snopios will Synchro into our Askan. We'll then use Askan to target the Jet Synchron. Activate Snopios to banish the Paces. And then activate Shift. Shift and Askan will go into a Deep Beyond. And we'll add the Snopios to our hand. Deep Beyond was summoned on the 5th summon, so if the opponent did have a nib, we'd be able to banish it with our Baron de Floor. Opponent will activate Talents to draw 2 cards and end their turn. What I really love about both Snake Eyes and the Goatee matchup is both decks are very interactive and both decks are really good in the grind game, so the duels can be really fun. So our Deep Beyond comes back with 7000 attack, and we have our Shift and Paces. There's a very good chance the opponent has an Imperm in the back row. We want to activate our Aryan Posts. Hopefully they resolve their Imperm on our Aryan Posts. Uh, they do have a Veiler, so that's going to negate the Aryan Posts. The best thing for me to do is just to go straight into the battle phase with Deep Beyond and run into that Imperm before the 5th summon, otherwise I will get Nibiru'd. I deserve to get Nibiru'd right here, it was a really big mistake here, but we still have some more plays here. We can banish Askan and Paces with Snopios, target Snopios to banish it when it leaves the field. Askan will banish Shift from the graveyard, special summon the Askan. Then we can use the Ready Fusion in the hand to summon a level 2 tuner. And then we're going to be able to Synchro Summon into a monster to negate the Imperm. Alvain plus Snopios will Synchro into Dragite. Emancipated Ryzen Dragite has another effect that sometimes you can forget all about, and that is we can search the top 5 cards of our deck, and if we happen to have a rock, we can return one card of the opponent controls back to the hand. So we can activate this, we still have at least one Nibiru in the deck, and we don't get lucky enough to bounce a card. We're going to go into the battle phase, crash our Askan into the nib, and go in for Dragite. On the opponent's turn, we can bring back our Shift and special summon our Paces. So we still have one more Deep Beyond, and we're protected by Dragite. The opponent's going to draw a card, summon the Poplar, Search for the original Sinful Spoil spell. The opponent doesn't search with Diabell Star, maybe because they don't have any more spells to search. They're going to activate their spell to summon a card from the deck. And bring back the Jet Synchron, which we really don't want to happen. So we're going to Synchro with Paces with our Askan into a Deep Beyond. And there goes the Imperm. So we're going to negate that Imperm with Dragite. And once we wipe the field with Deep Beyond, the board will be empty and then we'll be able to activate our Cyframe Gamma. So on top of having a negate, we still have a Nibiru. We don't have to activate Snopios at the end of the turn. We can just leave our field empty so we can negate anything with Gamma. So here we're going to get our Deep Beyond back and that's going to be enough to end the game. Deep Beyond will have a fat 9000 attack. That's going to be enough to rank up into Master Rank, and that's using a Goatee deck with Dimensional Shifter. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that deck. So for this season, I'm running a Goatee deck without Coelacanth, and it has 41 cards. It has a 75% chance of doing a Deep Beyond. Going second is 85% chance, and so that averages to about 80% chance of doing a Deep Beyond combo. This also means 1 out of 5 games you're kind of playing suboptimally, but your opponent is having a bad time because it also means you probably have like 3 or 4 hand traps. 
This deck also has 16 hand traps. You're almost guaranteed to at least draw one, and two out of three games you're drawing two hand traps. The current meta with Snake Eyes as tier one demands that you have a lot of hand traps in order to stop them from playing. Because if you're going second against a deck like Snake Eyes and you have no hand traps to stop them from doing their combo, you're probably gonna lose unless they brick. If you wanna increase your own consistency, you can lower the amount of hand traps to maybe two Nibiru or two Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is probably the least impactful hand trap right now. Even though it does help us out um, maxi, our deck doesn't really do a lot of combos anyway, and we also have things like Gamma and Shifter, which can help us against maxi, and we also have Cross Out. You can also increase the number of Leafish to three copies. I also brought back Stealth Kragen. There are sometimes moments in which uh, you only have Shathana, Abyss Shark, or Ready Fusion, or maybe a negated Leafish, and so you can only access a level 4 XZ. It does come up, but admittedly if you didn't have it, you probably wouldn't miss it. In my next video, I'll have some replays for you with turn 0 Goatee. It's a pretty fun way to play Goatee, especially when we get Sykes, which will increase the consistency of this deck. For now, it's just mostly a meme. I'll see you guys next time.